Audio? Uh, no, when do you start? When you start. Okay, okay, okay. Rita, you can start, ma. Rita? Yes, ma'am. Good evening to all the participants. It's my absolute pleasure to welcome each and every one of you to the seven day international faculty development program through online on the topic advanced techniques in research methodology, which is organized by Patterson College of Arts and Science, PG and Research Department of Commerce, Shift One. Today, we are on the sixth day of our program. Topic of the day is research ethics. Now, I would like to invite uh, Sneha Lidia for the prayer. Ms. Neha? Sneha, are you there? Uh, Rita, you proceed uh, with the prayer, ma. Okay. Ma'am, can we cancel the prayer or? No, no, no. You, you, you start the prayer, ma. Yeah, Rita, once again, uh, on behalf of Snega, let me lead the congregate uh, participants in prayer. Okay, ma'am. Like, please, yeah, kindly join with me in the prayer. Our loving okay, Heavenly Father, Thank you for this one more day in our life. Thank you for this day in our life. As we are gathered here virtually for our FDP, thank you for the privilege of gaining knowledge. We summit each and every participant on the platform in your mighty hand. Open your eyes and mind to learn the new things. We especially summit our resource person in your mighty hand. Help him to deliver the words so then we can understand. Father, we once again thank for this wonderful opportunity given for us. Be with us till the end of the program. We ask you these things in the name of our Lord, Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, ma'am. Now I would like to invite our principal. Um, now I would like to invite Dr. N. Pursutaman, sir for the welcome address and the introduction of the resource person. Thank you, Rita. Thank you, sir. Good evening, all. On behalf of PG and Research Department of Commerce of Petition College Arts and Science, it is proud privilege to welcome you all for our sixth day faculty development program. It is my present task of introducing today a resource person, Dr. R. Jesu Jaya Sudan, sir. Dedicated, self-motivated, team-oriented, easy, adaptable, hardworking, and versatile researcher with a doctoral degree in bioinformatic and biotechnology. I have 14 years of teaching experience and research experience in industries and academic organization. Expertise in structural biology, environmental science, gene mutational studies, molecular characterization in vitro cell culture, and transfection in vivo metal toxicity analysis and paramecopore applications. Number 2020 till date, research coordinator and assistant professor. Marudar Kesari Jain College for Women, Vaniam Body, Tamil Nadu, India. June 2006 to November 2006, Application Specialist, Lock Innovative Fine Technology. Job description is received VIT University Research Award for publishing a research paper in I Impact Factor Journal. Participated and presented in 25 conference and seminar and his research paper published in many national and 
international journals. I once again, I am really welcome you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Now, I would like to invite the resource person, Dr. R. J. Sujaya Sudan, sir, to proceed with the program. Over to you, sir. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, sir. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Am I visible now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'll just start sharing screen. Now, before I start, I just would like to thank uh, Petition College, management of the Petition College. And uh, I thank uh, Dr. Vaidegi, IQAC team. And uh, I thank my, I, I just express my sincere gratitude to Dr. Yurika Ma'am, Achori, who just, I had a few words with her. He is an inspiring man. So he gave me a chance, giving me a chance to deliver on this particular topic. So I express sincere gratitude to all the Commerce Department staffs and IPC team members. And also I would like to thank my management, Mother K. C. Jain College Management and my our uh, principal for giving me, I mean, permitting me and giving me a chance to address this uh, seven day FDP program on topic research ethics. So I just start my session. Yes, sir. Please go ahead, sir. <clears throat> it's it's visible, ma'am. No, my my slides. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yep. So I think this is uh, good evening all. Good evening all. Uh, I think uh, this is the right time, uh, high time to uh, deal with research ethics. So currently, uh, every institution is running behind research, research projects, proposals, grants, patents. So on the hurry, we we we, we miss something that is called ethics. So I think this is the right time we everyone have to get aware of what is research ethics. Even uh, when I mean uh, being a researcher, having 14 years of experience, um, I, I admit myself, I don't have a complete knowledge of research ethics because there are a lot, lot of things we have to learn every day. We have to update. It's, it's not a matter of doing some research. So I, I hope this session would uh, What's so like envision or uh, it will reveal some analysis, some uh, research ethic knowledge. Uh, definitely, I think. I start with research ethics uh, with a quote from Porter Stewart. He is a judge of a Supreme Court of the United States of America. He states that ethics is knowing the difference between what you have a right to do and what is right to do. Oh, the word it clearly states that what we have a right to do and very important is what is right to do that is ethics right so obviously by seeing the picture the court clearly says that a person sitting next to that he is trying to hypnotize a person by making him to watch something that is some force flag and trying to do some so is that ethical or non I mean, is unethical that we have to understand by hope you all understand that uh, this is the outline so we are i'm going to touch what is ethics and ethics in research and uh, why research ethics is important uh, core elements of research ethics then finally it is common reasons for unethical behavior so ethics obviously it is a set of rule or you could say like standards that teach what is morally right or wrong in general ethics. When coming to research, a different sets of rules or principles that direct the researchers to accomplish or complete the project in an appropriate manner. So this is very important. When we start a research, it is not the thing that I know something, I, I know uh, the possible, possible outcome 
and uh, it might be definitely beneficial to me and uh, I can carry out this research. No, you, you, cannot, you cannot start the research just like that. So that is, if every individual starts like that, so looking on their own beneficial things and doing some research, I, I just imagine how this universe would be like. Every individual is trying to do some, uh, uh, very precisely now, very particularly some war is going on here, I um, mean, uh, around the uh, world. Someone creates patriot, one, uh, someone long back, a scared, someone is trying to fight, someone tries to destroy someone. So each and every one individual will be strengthening his own field and try to destroy the environment. And that is not a fair thing. So what this research ethics is doing here is, it is setting a standard to all the researchers where we have to carry out, where, what are the rules we have to follow, what are the principles we have to follow when we do the research. So that is what we are going, trying to learn today. I am just trying to uh, tell you all, uh, teach you all, or I am just going to explain you all. The importance of research ethics. So why it's so important uh, to get aware of what is research ethics? So research ethics, obviously it will maximize benefits, right? Uh, research ethics by getting aware of research ethics will maximize the benefits of outcome. And uh, the research ethics standards minimize the harmful of the research which we carry out. When we follow the research ethics, the research ethics helps the researchers to minimize the harmful things that we do while we are completely when trying to run a project and also by standing by following the standards it enhances our courage or strengthens our knowledge to extend collaborations and uh, signing the collaborations with particular standards for particular principles and rules then again i was talking about standards again so it also teaches to maintain the standards promotes the knowledge gains the trust The core elements of research ethics are mentoring, data acquisition, acquisition, authorship, publication, peer review, collaboration, conflicts of interest, research misconducts, animal subjects, human subjects. So these are the major core elements of research ethics. So these I am going to I mean explain one by one. So mentoring, obviously. Teaching is one of the most precious job one can do. And not everyone can be a good teacher. Out of 100, many fall short of being a good teacher. Mentoring is not that much easy. Right? Mentoring that comes out of interest. Right? So the principle that high skill sets required for mentoring is our five eyes. So one is interest. Another one is invest, the third one is involve, then inculcate, then inspire. These are the skills essential for being a good teacher. Right. To being a teacher, first what we require is interest in our profession. Without interest, we cannot start moving a small thing a little far. But how can we start working on a student's thoughts without interest? Right? So if we start with the interest, we could start love the profession. If we have an interest, obviously we start to love, uh, start loving the profession. When we start loving the profession, obviously we start seeing the things in a beautiful way. When we start seeing the things in a beautiful way and without our knowledge, we'll start investing ourselves into that profession. So what we are going to invest when we start uh, our career with interest in the teaching. So we are going to invest the time and the knowledge. Time is the most precious gift that we can give, uh, one can give to another one. Because time cannot be replaced, time cannot be re returned, or time is once past is given, is given, past is past. So we give the best thing with the love, with the interest to the students. And next thing is knowledge. This is very important. And 
whatever we learn beyond that we prepare ourselves we tend to give beyond our knowledge to the students that comes out of interest we start giving a better investment the next is involvement so by seeing the interest of students by seeing the uh, grasping power of the students uh, by seeing this um, the observing skills of the students we cannot put them or tie them in our labs in our surrounding environments so once we understand this person is capable of moving ahead we have to try to find an alternative way by collaborating with large industries with our knowledge with our uh, i mean uh, with our influence we try to collaborate we have to extend our collaboration with industries research institutions so that we can allow our students to explore the knowledge from the industry side so in that way we have to collaborate so this comes out of involvement then the second then fourth thing is inculcate so what we are going to inculcate so when you, when you talk about the education the knowledge is second what is very the most prior thing is discipline right now i could see like even i'm working in a college i have uh, an experience in three, several different institutions but what i observed after post covid students are very what is it like they lack this discipline they lack the power of obedience they lack the sense of giving i mean being attentive in the class so in this particular time period what we are what, as a mentor what we are trying to do is what we have to do is setting them and putting them on the right track teaching them discipline is far most important than the knowledge without discipline knowledge is nothing I mean, it is not going to take anywhere in their career so inculcate them the discipline along with knowledge and fourth last thing is inspire if i being a teacher if i don't have an interest investment involvement and inculcating skill set now on earth i am going to inspire i mean student so as a mentor we have to inspire them by our by all this practices by i mean what we we are going to see them what we are going to teach them we have to show them in our practice in day to life day to day life so when we practice when we collaborate when we when we show our skill sets with the discipline obviously we can turn as a role model to the teachers so i would like to encourage you all encourage all the teachers with a small saying that as you teach to do, or do as you teach do not become weary in doing good as you teach do not become weary in doing good for at a proper time you will be rewarded so don't worry of what you are doing now you, you you may not be uh, i mean don't try to uh, i mean what's it like get reward on on instant what you are going to what you are doing is a service or you can say like a transformation of a student's life and that fruit will come you could taste the fruit if you wait for the patience so don't go weary in doing good so whatever it is might be the student might not be immediately turning into your track but you are seeding you are seeding the goodness into the student's life and that definitely will discipline him in a short while in absence of you also you, you, you might be start thinking of what you thought so don't worry of uh, immediate reaping so that will come in time so i, I would add, I, I encourage all the teachers so don't do not be become weary in doing good then coming to data acquisition acquisition that is first we have to know what is data it's a collection of information then acquisition is act of obtaining information so here when we collect the data and uh, the data or when we conduct an experiment we get some data so what we have to do is the data should be true enough it should be a true fact and the data should be 
having that the data obtained process should be transparency it should hold a transparency method the next the data which we have in a research it should be able to reproduce right so what we do one i mean we, we might be doing some methods and we're trying to uh conclude something and when some person is trying the same process when he is not getting that is not the fair data which we provide in the research so when you give a data uh, when you get a data or when you submit a data to a conference or any other proceedings or any uh, for a publications the data should be true and it should be transparent and it should be able to reproduce and don't worry of um, the goal because i would like to encourage again um, uh, you could say like uh, i mean uh, thomas arvor edison right edison he he figured out the bulb so i'm just sitting under that and i'm just enjoying it but he said like he has tried made his attempt 1000 times 10000 i mean 1000 times right 10000 times and he stated that he has figured out 9999 ways of failures so there to reach this goal so negatives will never put you down when you when you when you start uh being a transparent and uh, when you start your research as a honest way and obviously that will definitely take you to the accomplish i mean take you to the better outcome so don't worry of that and never try to practice changing the data or some data manipulations that uh, that mean i mean in our coming slides we are going to see that what are the mal mal practice researches do right so i could say like if when coming to the data let your yes be yes no be no right let your yes be yes what you get yes this is what i got and you just try to write the manuscript or conclude the research which you, in a better way don't try to i mean manipulate the things the next it is authorships and authorship and publication right when whenever we do some research obviously even i, I think uh, most of uh, participants over here is women when we when we figure out some when we figure out some better dish at at, at home that it tastes yummy obviously what we have to do what we all tend to do is we try to invite or uh, we'll try to distribute to the neighbors we'll wantedly we go and uh, give to neighbors and ask them to taste and we hope obviously we will we'll wait for some rewards right recognition some some way they will say like yeah it tasted good so how we are doing that is when we when we come out with a new uh, i mean finding we try to share our i mean outcome with some other for recognition so while you coming back while you coming to the research how this research is are getting recognized is through authorship authorship when you find uh, a new outcome we just just write the results we make a document and we just put the author we get the authorship and we just what we what we are doing is next is publication so publication is nothing but it's a process of disseminating research findings to the scientific community so we just just disseminate share the things and uh, currently what is happening right every institution is now running behind a nag 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 so what nag is trying to do is strengthen the education system for better outcome to bring a better outcome in students life but what's happening in our institutions in everywhere to get a nag accreditations or anything somewhere something is going wrong and it is not the management it is not the author so we have to think what is happening or in what way things are going wrong so one fact is in recent times a person's scientific potentiality is measured by his or her publication right so now what things has changed not by knowledge not by the skill sets now how many publications immediate question when you talk about um, uh, i'm in i'm in the faculty i'm a research faculty from the institution immediately the next question is how many publications you have what is the citation number of citations so the standards of one particular educated educator or researcher 
Now it is measured by number of publications. And it is the indirect pressure that is entering into an education society. <clears throat> okay. Now my, my question is, calibrating a person's strength, scientific potentiality with a number of publications is right or wrong? I just put the question to yourself. And also I would like to uh, say, I mean, uh, share something that is, there are most of the inventions, discoveries till now, uh, I mean, unnoticed, till now it is, un, I mean, remain unnoticed. Uh, it doesn't mean that being unnoticed is not a potential research. Being unnoticed is not a potential research. The world is running behind something. The person I worked on a different area, but when things come back, turn back to that area, obviously the world will turn back to the research which has been left unnoticed. This is what happened when Newton identified uh, the gravitational force. No one, I mean, agreed, no one accepted, everyone denied, everyone, or in, in turn, instead of uh, recognition or instead of uh, appreciation, they started, I mean, what is it, cursing, they started stoning him. A lot of things happened. But now, without its principle, there is no research, right? There is no research. It started like that. It's now it's moving on. It's everywhere. Everywhere it is lays that the Newton's finding has been, I mean, in, incorporated. You can connect every research into its principle, right? So uh, don't worry of what you find, what you published, where you published, what paper, I mean, what number of papers we have, and it is it lacks a citation, or it remains unnoticed. Never be worried of that thing. I would like to say that because time will come. Because now Corona started, no one has been worked before on SARS COVID. You would have, you just see that everyone started SARS COVID for a period of time. They started working on it. And this run behind that two to three years, matter of fact, then they closed the stop, then they started moving in with the different topics. Then all of a sudden, again, came the Corona COVID, COVID came back. And uh, once COVID-19 came, you know, it started, everyone started working on COVID. Now, where is the COVID research now? So these are the seasonal researches. So seasonal researches will come and go. Don't worry about it. There are standard research that definitely need time to recognize, get recognized, or definitely need time to be when what's like rewarded. So just wait for things. And if you want to, I could, I could give some example. You just recall, or you could see the Nobel laureates, how many number of publications they have. If that is the case, if, if this measure has to be done only with the number of publications, means the highest number of publication, person who published the I mean, paper, you know, he might have been acknowledged as laureate, Nobel laureate. The thing is not like that. So don't worry of uh, being, um, uh, being, I mean, you have a list number of publications and it takes time for me to publish a paper. Don't worry of that, right? So what I could say is what quality never matters. Sorry, quantity never matters. Quality is important than the quantity. One good paper, will definitely get you some 2000 citations. You wait for the time. If your outcome is what's it like, you just figure out in a right way and that is more essential and a lasting thing, then definitely it will get you a better recognition to your, I mean, to your research, right? The next it is peer review, right? Peer review is a process of the examining a man's manuscript by experts prior to publish, prior the paper get published, you know, uh, that is a peer review. And uh, through this, what what is the benefit we are going to get? What is the benefit we get here is, the peer review system, what's it like, strengthens our work, right? We, uh, I mean, here, what the people, most of the people do here is the journals. The journals ask the author itself to uh, suggest some reviews, potential reviews for uh, the area of work. And most of the people, you know, 
what they do is they suggest the known reviewers. So or, or they send the paper to the uh, known editors. Right. Uh, before I come into the subject, and most of the developing institutions they don't they, they don't, don't understand what is peer review. Right. They 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 go for UGC journals, and uh, the journal you know the journal stays says that it is a peer review journal, and you won't understand. I mean you won't believe. The paper they send this this week, day one, on the day eighth, it get published. And the journal is not online, the journal is only print only journal. And and they say like they claim that there is a peer review system. The journal has a peer review system. Peer review, obviously, we have I mean I myself uh, I'm in a review for two to three journals. I'm I'm I'm, I'm just working as I mean uh, doing some review works for the journals. Right, they 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 send the paper to me, and uh, they wait for the time, and then uh, they give us thirty to forty days, and uh, time to I uh, mean uh, evaluate the paper, and after evaluation, you know they take back the paper, and uh, what are the I mean uh, suggestions we make, you know they read it, they suggest it. So peer review system is not that. Quick in you no, know, at least the very faster uh, journals, you know, they have they take minimum fifteen to twenty days to review a paper to make a uh, decision. But what most of the people doing is they send the suggested known reviewers, the suggested known reviewers to the journal, and uh, they ask, I mean, what's it like? They expect the paper will definitely publish. Is the paper what what the paper they send is? Uh, properly screened or what? Ask the question to you all. Is this the right ethical manner? Sending the paper to the known reviewer. Actually, the peer review system is sent to evaluate the manuscript in the right way, ethical way, right? So when it is ethically done, when the paper is in the anonymous reviewer, right? With the anonymous where when he is uh, when he is a uh, what to say like uh, expert in our field definitely he might reject or he might use i mean what's like he might uh, give some valuable suggestions uh, and they can and he can suggest like he can put the paper for minor revision he can send back the paper for as uh, you know minor for minor revision but what is happening here when he sent the paper to the anonymous reviewers they enhance the quality of our work they and also by anonymous reviewing system we what's it like as an author as a researcher we get a confident that the process the methods which we followed are implemented and the project work is is correct right so when when someone is properly anonymous i mean reviewer is examining and accepting the all the methodologies which we followed and what are the outcome we get is uh, i mean correct and he is defining that you just imagine how we might feel right so we always allow to when you send a i mean paper for a uh, anonymous reviewing system our research will get strength and uh, we will expect positive criticisms and through this criticism, and the paper might be uh, get published in a better way, right? In review process, there are three different processes. One is open review system. Open review system is uh, the author author's names will be revealed to the I mean uh, reviewer reviewer's name will be revealed I mean revealed to the author. And single blinded or single anonymous uh, reviewing system, the reviewer may know the author's name, but author may not know. The reviewer double blinded or double anonymous system is that neither the reviewer nor the author will know who is going to review or whose, whose paper is this right that is a double blind system and i could give one example um, in mine itself what i experienced when i sent a paper the, that was my first paper i would have been uh, which um, if some some of the colleagues over here they might know uh, they also did the PhD in VIT when I was doing my doctorate degree in VIT right so I sent my paper I started I prepared a research I just 
sent the paper to a journal named amino acid the impact factor is 3.4 and uh, they rejected my paper but they gave some positive critics and they showed what lacks in my paper what are the things that my paper lacks and uh, what i did is i just started working on it i enhanced my paper i, I just addressed all the critics that has been addressed by the reviewer and i sent the paper to a journal now earlier i sent the journal uh, my paper to the journal with the impact factor of 3.4 the next time i just sent the paper to the journal which has an impact factor of 6.3 and the paper has been <clears throat> i mean what's like and i mean reviewed and it i get just i just got positive comments and again they sent some uh, suggestions and they put gave me a chance of uh, they so i mean what's like the editor gave me a chance he suggested the paper i mean he gave, sent the paper in the point of view like he made the decision as minor review then i just working on the paper and resubmitted the paper and it took some 3 to 4 months and it started on uh, december and yeah, uh, my paper got accepted in june in the 6.3 impact factor and uh, the meantime when the paper got accepted you know the journal got the impact factor of the journal got revised and the 6.3 impact factor now it it, it got doubled 12.6 right so this is the thing that which i i got honored in vit right by by publishing the paper in 12.6 impact factor uh so what happened is transparency true data loud for uh, loud and welcome the criticism enjoyed it and really sincerely uh, focused on addressing the all the critics and i i just got a reward and the reward you know uh, the entire uh, university they they came to know that i published the paper in 12.6 impact factor so that could happen to everyone uh, i could say like so start Uh, I mean, giving the reviewer, I mean, high-end reviewers like expertise, high pioneer expertise as a reviewer for your manuscript, and definitely they will show you where we are, our research lacks, or some problem it needs something to be sorted out, or whatever things. So they will send us the positive critics, so you can address that, you can share your, I mean, you can publish the paper in a better high impact journals, high standard journals. then coming to the conflict of interest right so conflict of in a conflict of interest is between the parties involved some two or uh, more parties or a two i mean one i know between two person when they jointly start doing some uh, research uh, when they have a strong bias uh, then they will come out with the conflict of interest this conflict conflict of interest is uh, we have six p's there are there are six p's of conflict of interest private interest potentialities perceptions proportionalities uh, presence of mind promises i i just explain all oh, men one by one private of interest is my interest i start doing some research in one particular area that should not affect what's the next the society that should not cause any disturbance to the public welfare that should not Uh, cause any disturbance to the public welfare that is one conflict of interest that is called that comes in a private interest next potentiality is personal benefit right potentiality is personal benefit that doubts the reliability of the data right so personal when we have a data you know someone is doubting our data then uh, that comes in a potentiality conflict of interest then perception when person start assuming uh, how can this person would have been completed or accomplished this project i i i know that he, this person is not having high that that standard of doing the research and this person is not capable of uh, i mean um, coming out with this kind of i mean uh, information outcomes so th- in this way they can uh, i mean what's like they will come out with a conflict of interest then proportionality that is when three together start doing some research when publishing paper i'm just deliberately leaving the person not giving authorship or when i was doing some uh, joint venture i mean what's it like um, consultation 
when when I'm benefiting financially ben gateway benefited, I'm not sharing anything to the person. Then there comes the conflict. That is called proportionality. And presence of mind. When uh, when uh, we always need awareness of what I'm doing is ethically correct or not. When I'm not having that such awareness of ethically uh, wrong things, then that there comes the conflict of interest. Then promises. Promises is the last thing that. When we vow, or when I when I uh, come into an agreement, I uh, say like I will I will just produce this within the time. I'll I'll just uh, give this data uh, to you once the thing is complete data to you, and uh, once the research get completed, the project gets over. And I'm not giving that, and there comes a conflict of interest. These are the reasons. These are some things where a person get in, uh, I mean capable of getting conflict of interest. Added to that, these are the uh, most things that is commonly happening now without our knowledge. Where someone is, where you know, somewhere, somewhere on earth, when you are sharing your information on online, or when you are submitting some uh, your ideology to some conferences, some uh, I mean, um, uh, for grants, somewhere something, something is happening. Someone is stealing your information. So when you figure out that, you can try to uh, I mean, rise the conflict of interest, right? Stealing, uh, what are the, these are the different types of stealing that is happening. We are not able to, we are not, I mean, aware of it. Some might be aware of it, right? So what is stealing the rights of a person? Say so stealing concept of the person, stealing the resource. How, how one can steal resource? The person is working in one particular organization. And is not uh, giving any acknowledgement to the organization, or utilizing some lab facility, and he is not providing any uh, acknowledgement to that uh, lab. He is not listing and utilizing some fund from the DST or DBT grant, and you are not mentioning the funding agencies. So these are the stealing resources. Then effort, right? This is a cunning act. Uh, uh, without saying anything, without explaining the complete outcome of the project, we'll just share only the few objective to the one person, ask him to complete. I'm just trying to figure out some, we just give lame excuses and we just wind up. And uh, finally, we'll, we'll take that and we incorporate in a major, I mean, uh, a major project and we're just publishing it. That is a stealing of effort without giving any recognition. Then stealing of results. Some person's result is just copying it and just put, I mean, before he is published, before he publishes the work, you just, uh, you just publish the data uh, uh, with the results of the other person. Then stealing the benefits, and I already said authorship. Then stealing the identity of the person, stealing the data. So these are the different types of, uh, I mean, acts that is happening in and where you can uh, follow, I mean, come, we can add, I mean, we can rise the conflict of interest. Then I just come to the research misconduct. Yeah. So you might ask a question. I'm a good person. I'm, uh, I mean, uh, ethically, I'm just following all the things. And uh, I have no shortcomings in the research. I do. I'm just clear. I'm, I'm doing my research in the right way, in the right uh, thing, you know. Uh, why do I have to? I mean, um, think of uh, research misconduct. Now, by by start, I think uh, somewhere something everyone would be doing some mistakes. I I, I could explain that, right? Um, this is this research misconduct. And what I'm talking over here is this is intentionally violating the predefined sets of rules. Intentionally violating the ethical ethics of the research, right? So the intentional violations, there are the mass, I mean, major three intentional violations are fabrications, falsifications, then plagiarisms. So fabrications, you might be aware of that. So making up a data uh, or uh, just uh, uh, turning the data in my favor. The result which I conduct, I conduct an experiment. Uh, the experiment result says that it's a negative, but I just I mean, making the data to bring out, end up with a positive way. So fabricating the data. And falsification is manipulating data. Again, this is a manipulating, so deliberately vomit, vomiting something uh, that uh, brings a negative outcome of my project, the methods which I follow. And deliberately just 
uh, including some other thing which is not necessary for the project, but including to enhance my result as a positive way, right? So these are the manipulation of the works which we try to do. And uh, plagiarism, obviously, replicating someone's research, like copying and uh, I mean, uh, yeah, one's idea or copying some um, method, copying some um, uh, I mean, text from uh, one person's publications. So this is called plagiarism. I uh, just listed out uh, in a descending order, right? The highly uh, research, the high research misconduct throughout the globe is duplication of work. So this is a high priority. The highly, the most of the research works are duplicated. Uh, that this is a one misconduct, major misconduct. The next set is self plagiarism, right? I just copy my paper. I, I have a lot of, I have seen my, 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 what is like one of my known person and he just published a paper and next time he is not, I mean, uh, what is it like manipulating any data, he next time he carries out the same experiment. That is, he is intent to do monotonous research, right, monotonous research, same methodology, but different team, uh, different, I mean, different protein or different gene same uh, steps so the text will be same remain same and the values will change accordingly he will run another uh, proteins uh, exam in a research methodology research work and he will uh, get the data from um, the particular experiment and he just try fix it on the already published paper he will just change the values here and change the title change the notes or subheadings then he'll publish the paper self plagiarism so yeah text will be same the so only the values will be changed it doesn't mean i mean he is not copying the same paper but he is copying the text but with a different outcome right then personal influence influencing that is what i just talking about personal influence uh sending the paper to the known reviewer right so asking the reviewer and informing the reviewer I have sent the paper to this journal. You might get the paper. So please do favor for me. So this is not the ethical way of publishing things, right? Then influencing the editor. Non editor is there. Obviously, a lot of things is happening. I'm not just uh, telling. I just witnessed. I witnessed. I have seen it, right? These are the things happening with all around. Uh, some some developing institutions, even some developed institution is doing this. Uh, persons from the developed institution, they are doing involved in this particular research misconducts. Then plagiarism, I already say like, then false authorship. Yeah, this is, uh, this happens very precisely in developing institutions. False authorship is, he will never do any work. He has not stepped into a lab, but he will pay the amount to the person who was conduct the experiment and ask for the authorship right he said that i will i'll give you some 10000 i'll give you some 15000 you give me authorship at least a second authorship then then he, you know the bargaining is going like this you know, if you give 25000 i'll give you first author if you give 50000 i'll just make you a corresponding author no this is what happening now or oh, this i just tell you why this is not happening uh, just this is a false authorship. Then next it is data fabrications. So look at the order. Increased uh, misconduct is ended up with the duplication, then self plagiarism, then personal influence, then influencing the editors, then plagiarism, false authorship. Then there comes up data fabrications. And uh, biological side, uh, clinical side. All right. These are some other areas where data fabrication and falsification has been carried out, right? So interviews that in that was incorporated with the, I mean, what's like publications, screening logs, test scores, patient data, procedure data, follow-up exams, protocols, entry, entry criteria, number of subjects, lab results, consent forms, approval forms. So these are the different areas still a lot of I mean, uh, fabrication and falsifications has been identified uh, in uh, various journals and various research um, conferences and uh, organizations. And coming back to this plagiarism, plagiarism I could say like 
control c control v obviously you know that right just copying pasting that's all and then you just start submitting the work right this is not fair this is not ethical practically using any of the following intellectual property with some without permission or giving credit without permission of some persons i mean using some uh, data of a one person who published uh, or without his permission or without giving some credit to him that is citation references right that is offense ethically offense research ethically offense so this is called as struggler plagiarism right so everyone thinks uh, so plagiarism so what is happening current research you know to avoid this plagiarism what currently now the researchers are doing is they take the text the content of a one particular person's uh, paper the pay, i mean uh, they start rearranging the phrases rearranging the phrases to avoid the plagiarism you might be playing i mean what's it like you might be a uh, rearrange that without changing the meaning without changing that that is a plagiarism rearranging the phrases is a plagiarism no one is aware of that but if if someone starts ethically working on rearranging and trying to figure out that i believe i believe almost 90% of the publications would have been trapped retracted that will get retracted the what is i what retraction i will just come back then i explain that later then copying right some people you know copy paste they least to bother about what they did they just sent the paper for publication the last one everyone is arguing para paraphrasing is not plagiarism no para paraphrasing paraphrasing is very i mean is is also an extensive plagiarism act right so you just take that you put your own word but not changing the meaning without changing the meaning and you just play a word play you just do perform a word play and then you are submitting the I main words like Uh, content you are just submitting that to for publication that even that is also plagiarism so these are the facts which we are we were aware but intentionally or unintentionally we are doing that right why why this is happening why this is happening why uh, why um, all this unethical issues are happening Uh, so to my understanding currently currently what is happening is uh, professional pr pressure there is professional pressure is there so what is happening is the pressure or uh, the target right you just get out or get out right publish or perish right that is one important thing that is happening in every institution they put a pressure the management or institution the, they put a pressure to publish the paper and they set the target every every sem you have to publish some three to four papers every every uh, annum per annum you have to publish some 10 papers to get an increment to get a, a job security and um, uh, so the what I mean most of the failures in the publications again this i all time all time i have encountered this particular pressure so i try to So you could see that I have a uh, less number of publications, but uh, I just try to publish in a different publishers, not uh, in, I mean individual publishers, a standard publishers. I that is my idea of publishing things, not in a single journal or a single way of publishing things. Publishing with the different publishers, and then what is it like um, in a reputed standard prestigious journals. So when we are trying this. definitely we will come out with failures that is some rejections don't worry of rejections just what we have to expect from the rejection is what is the critics we got received the comments we received and just try to work on it sort out that then submit back to the journal so obviously one publishing a one quality paper it will take at least at least a year at least a year uh, minimum right one process there might be uh, i mean chances of i mean what is it like things will have carry forward like one and a half years two years one paper getting a publishing papers so when paper is in i, I mean so it 
don't worry after things let it be when you say submit it to the journal let that be the problem I mean, reviewers do the job so you can start doing other publications so accumulate the papers one by one you submit that the time will come one by one we will get published when you have women words like when you standardize your quality of work with all the critics which you got all the rejections then the papers will be published in a reputed journals with high standard journals then that will definitely get you a better recognition in your institutions or in organizations where you are so wait for that never 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 uh, i mean what is it never um take this pressure into yourself try to explain to the management try to address the management what are the difficulty you are facing so don't fall as a prey for the pressure professional pressures right and some another side is some the, to get a if you are trying to get some grant even uh, the grant side if you are approaching a grant you know that person is asking a publication related, related publications for applying the concern area where you are or which you are for what you are applying for a grant so again you have to come back for the publications so these are the pressures we every pro, I mean professional researchers facing and this pressures encourage researchers to do this shortcomings to to do this flaws the misleads uh to do uh misleads to this misdeeds or worse things right so by practicing things happen i i could see like there are a lot of um I mean, uh, researchers continuously publishing you know what another side is a person on uh one is struggling to publish two or three people per annum uh when one a group of researchers struggling like that some person publishing 50 to 60 papers per year worst case is one person is publishing 100 papers and per year just imagine how this is happening where it is going wrong how could it possible right so these are the things happening uh, one of there are some researches you do during the what's it like um phd itself they come out with 60 to 70 papers just imagine what is happening so definitely you could understand there is some research unethical things are going behind it but what is happening by by practicing this unethical works right what has happened is they 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 never regret for what they are doing that's what i have mentioned here the no remorse for misdeeds that is a sad truth then who i mean i have i just laid out the question who's to be blamed right who's to be blamed they, uh, the I mean, uh, the we as a scientist or researchers, uh, scientists or researchers, we understand that for every living organism to become a wild or to be a normal the environment plays an important factor, right? Here, this for this unethical practices, who who is to be blamed? Either the author or the management or the funding organizations whom to be blamed right so anyhow we cannot compare ourselves to another person don't compare yourself you have your own standards you have your own uh, challenges so you will get so wait for the right time wait for the I mean, uh, right thing to come just put that in a right way right how how the scientific community deals with the misconduct right so once uh, once any person is report uh, to the particular organization they receive the report they start the initial assessment uh, during the initial assessment they will uh, figure out the report is true or it is falsely framed if it is true they'll start to the moving to the next passing that to the CRA investigation CRA is central research uh, institution that is, uh, they will start the investigation, and uh, while well, during the investigation, they will work on, they will figure out what, where they did the malpractices, where they failed to follow the ethics. Uh, is that a serious issue? Uh, it is a serious misconduct. And once, they, if they find out that, they start making a decision. If it is a publication, retract. If it, if it is a project, they will terminate it. Right. So. By this act, 
retraction and the terminations definitely that not only affects a person personally it also affects the organization where he is working in and the surrounding uh, the entire researchers who is doing a quality research in the same organization so it reflects everywhere in that every I mean, every every context he has made where he has collaborated so what the work is done how the financials is sharing is done so everywhere they will start working on it they're tracing it they'll make a serious action so i i just uh, read some articles some people from uh, central research institution they moved on to singapore research institute this did they did some false work they i mean some person from nine in netherlands they figured out the false paper uh, false data that has been published then uh, the it has been uh, reported to some central research organization they investigated they figured out the paper got retracted and the position has been uh, removed the recognitions all that they had you know they have been taken back so these all the things happen now, now they have no go to they have no go where to go where to, what to do with their career in their career they have a degree but it is good for nothing for them i mean nothing but they have to set back they have to start doing some level works so this might happen to anyone at any time so don't uh, think that everyone is doing so we also can start doing something don't fall for the for us to pray for that time will come so you will be seriously punished so don't worry of that so being honest definitely uh, will get you some reward but it might be delayed delayed is not a uh, rejection denied right delayed will definitely come out with a prestigious rewards for you so start doing some research then last two uh, things i just uh, touch uh, human research subjects when you're working on human research right so i mean uh, I said, I mean, only doctors know that what are the things we have to follow clinical with the person who is involved in clinical research, they will, aware of, they will be uh, aware of what are the things to be followed. We also may use human, but following the Nuremberg Code. This is a theory of ethics that is very precisely, very particularly stated in handling the human as a research subject, right? First, we have to get consent, that is willingness of the person and then uh, not by compulsion and it should be legal uh, legally uh, done it should be legally done not uh, by bribing or some giving some money so these are happening some uh, pharmaceutical companies are trying making trials by paying some monies so these are the not uh, good uh, essential i mean what's like ethical acts these are this we have to strictly deny that okay we have to take a honest consent from a person then the results you know that should, I mean, when you start using the human as human, um, humans for a research, you know, the study should bring the societal benefit, right? The research should end up with the societal benefits. If not, that is an unethical act. Then evidence, coming back to the evidence, um, the performer should have a thorough knowledge. He should anticipate what is the outcome of the work and he, he he has to confirm each and every step that he is moving towards the anticipated result the next is suffering suffering is there should not be uh, should 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 not be there in the in the case of handling a human unnecessary physical injury and mental suffering is unethical when you are using a human then the risk putting the human uh, into a uh, risk uh, oriented uh, circumstances then it is unethical then lethal, right? Trading them or dosing them with some lethal, um, then some substances that leads to death, you know, or injury, uh, then it is unethical. So these are the factors which we have to be very clear in handling human as a subject. Okay. So when we do some research, we have to make this uh, things clear. We have to uh, legally put this uh, statements in. Uh, in the, I mean, what's the question is or whatever the things you start doing some work, get appropriate acknowledgement with all these things, then start moving on it. Then coming to the animal research subjects, right? Uh, so, earlier days, you know, 
uh, even my UG period, you know, when I start doing some dissection, this to worry about the animals, you know, they will be just like the killing animal, I mean, rats, killing the cockroaches and uh, frogs, right? Carelessly, they'll ask us to dissect the nervous system. Uh, by mistake, we'll just break, I mean, we'll, uh, we'll uh, cut the nerve and again, we'll then give a new uh, a frog to, I mean, what is it, dissect. So we are very casual when I'm when I'm doing my UG, um, but later on the act, you know, ethical act has I mean what is it, Animal Blue Cross uh, they have surpassed the legal laws against this research. Uh, I mean handling the animal using the animals in the research works. You know the rights they passed the law and they set a goal ethics in handling uh, animals too. And what has happened is they, they passed uh, three hours when you start working on animal uh, research subjects. Uh, they mentioned we have to be relying on three hours. That is reduce, refine, replace. So reduce the number of animal usage. Right? When you are going for, so that is the reason every institution has been forced to have a, a higher education institution is forced to have an ethical committee, right? To work on this three hours. They will start when we are asking for 30 rats, uh, for our projects, they, they, they will uh, ask us to present the entire project, they will calibrate, uh, this person is uh, lavishly asking for animal, so they will reduce the number of animals for the study, refinement, the, I mean, is that uh, the study is going to be highly okay, torturous or what is painful uh, for the animals, then they will start, refine the procedures uh, uh, to avoid the painful procedures and all those things. Right, then replace, they look for a better alteration, replacement of using the animals. Is there any better alterations? You can use that. So these are the um, three major works of the ethical committee. They will, once you sit in the institution, when you're going for asking for animals, they will uh, ask you to present the, pro you ask, ask us to present the project. When we're presenting it, they will work on this three hours. Uh, so they'll suggest that. If not, they will provide limited amount of animals for our studies. The last is conclusion. Research ethics actually it, it is it gives us a map, and uh, it is a, actually research ethics is a map uh, for to, uh, that shows do's and don'ts where we have to uh, stop, what we have to start, what we have to know, what we should not start practice, what we should not uh, I mean what's like encourage, and uh, what is right, what is not right. So these things when we start doing some research. It clearly uh, deals with, I mean, what's happening. It reveals us um, to carry out the experiment. So, without knowing the research ethics, if we start working on the research and doing some all the malpractices, definitely day will come. Will be, uh, I mean, what's happening. Uh, we'll, we have to face the consequences. And uh, research ethics, understanding and uh, knowing things of what is research ethics and following that will definitely lead us to a better way. And it uh, it does not uh, knowing research ethics will never solve the problems, but it gives us a warning uh, of uh, will be punished, will be we have to face the consequences. This is not the right way. So everyone has to know as researchers complete uh, knowledge on research ethics. So what I just showed you is only few. There are a lot more. Some three more three like Nuremberg's theory. Like uh, there are some three more theories out there that has to be when you are handling some other documents on uh, th things. We have to learn. Uh, I mean, there are a lot of ethical issues that has to be incorporated. So due to a short time, I just made it precise preparations for you to present. And even I just while preparing it, I just come uh, aware of knowing some new things in the research ethics. So obviously day to day we as researchers we have to update our research ethics knowledge and we have to rely on it, we have to stick to that, we have to precisely or we have to confidently follow that and encourage others to follow, teach them to follow. As a teacher we are bringing a future, right? This future should not destroy the environment, this future should not take the research for as a grant for them, take it for grant. Right, they should not uh, create some unwanted things that that are against the nature that are, that destroys the nature. So teach them the real impact of research ethics, and that is betterment for them to understand and encourage them to practice in that way. So we have a lot of responsibilities to follow, 
um, I mean, uh, while we're doing the research, and more responsibility is shaping the future by shaping the students. So follow the rules and be at peace. So finally, uh, ethics is the religion of science. It is stated by Edwin Grant uh, Conlin. But I could say that it is, ethics is the breath of science without which a researcher, a research is dead. So thank you all. Happy researching. The session is open for questions. If you have questions, you can ask. Thank you, sir. Now the participants, you can ask your question. The yeah, participants, you are encouraged to clarify doubts with sir. Yeah. So one of the participants is saying that wonderful session. You know, it was the uh, it was like the knowledge pouring for the continuous uh, for the last one hour. Thank you for the wonderful session, sir. Uh, Vaidegi, ma'am. Uh, Vaidegi, ma'am, can you anchor the question answer session, ma'am? Vaidegi, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. And what? Yes, ma'am. Well, sir, uh, uh, even one of the uh, participant is asking, sir, can we send the manuscript to various journals? Yeah, yeah, that is another. I, I just forgot to tell that. Yeah, person, you know, <laughs> the one of my, one of my colleagues, junior, I mean, uh, junior, you know, he he was precisely encountering a, a rejection. What he did, you know, one one time, I mean, uh, one fine day, he just thought we go. He went mad. He just took the paper. He selected some ten uh, relevant journals and started submitting the paper to all the ten journals. You know, every journal has a consent while you're submitting the paper that you're stating, you're affirming that I have never, I mean, submitted this paper elsewhere to any conference or anything. I'm just duly submitting. How, how, how come you just have this conscious to you? Yes. When you're submitting for the 10 journals. So that is what I say. Like, this is ethically wrong. When the journal is clearly stating that, asking you to uh, confirm you have submitting this journal one, uh, paper only to this journal, then how you say give yes to all the 10 journals is ethically wrong. And somewhere, some would, I mean, uh, so one, 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 one incident I could say like one person, he got accepted in one journal, another journal said minor research, minor revision, and is possibly expecting a positive from that. So the journal which is accept, accepted as 0 0.5 impact factor, the journal which has suggested minor review is uh, I mean having four impact factor. So he is much interested in moving towards the four impact factor. When he started working on addressing the question, he is not able to we withdraw the paper from the 0 0.5 impact factor and he just moved over with the addressing the questions. And you know what? At the end of the day, he was failed to address all the questions and the paper got rejected. So that is one uh, lesson for him submitting uh, in uh, too, too many journals. And I could say like it is ethically wrong, ethically wrong. Somewhere, some would be, uh, you, you, you would be figured out because like banking, like banking, you know, this is for this reason only, like banking, there is a core banking, all the banks are linked together. Uh, similarly, one journal, if it is Taylor and Francis, all the journals is connected together. So if you are submitting one paper in two or more journals, the Taylor and Francis will get aware of that. And, uh, if you are submitting a paper in ACS in two or more journals, the same topic, same paper, the ACS will get aware of that. The next time, we won't allow you to submit, not even submitting your paper into the journal once they identify it. So be cautious, be aware of it. So don't do that. Uh, there are a couple of questions regarding plagiarism, sir. Uh, one yeah. participant is asking how to reduce plagiarism. Another participant is asking, what are the plagiarism check apps? Yeah, that's what I said. Like, so when you say you have, you have just read the article of some other person and that is the reference you're going to cite, but you're going to put that as a reference here and your ideology is the same. You're writing 
something related to that paper and you are cross referring the paper not the same words that has been uh, published you should not take the entire word that is published there and put that here and giving references plagiarism you write your own ideology in your own way and that the word you know the sentence which he has published it is relating to what you have written the concept which you are dealing here then you put the simply i mean citation over there so in that way you can avoid the plagiarism uh, you when i submit my thesis when i i mean when i submit my thesis my uh, it is 0.5 is a plagiarism report that is 0% plagiarism i had in my research. i mean this is uh, they when they check for plagiarisms so that is another achievement that is another satisfaction another prestigious moment that i faced when i mean when my writing my thesis so in that way you can write it so write your concept write your own style of i mean write the thing put the things in your own style and if the sentence the concept matches in the paper already published you just put the reference around there don't bring any word from the paper because it is matching to the text which you are writing here it's own your it's own text and own style of writing but the same statement it's already got published then you can put that and in better way i could say like when you get an answer when you say like uh, i'm going in a car the car is in a 60% speed and uh, it's about i uh, started just jerking up and upside down left and right right this is the statement you are writing then another person is already say like if this particular car if it is going in a 60% speed obviously it will jerk then you put that this is your uh, statement and already someone has reported your experience is different what you are experiencing you add that reference over to your own sentence see that way you can avoid sir another participant is asking like uh, nowadays uh, uh, most of the organizations are conducting uh, conducting some conferences but yeah. uh, for publishing papers alone they are suggesting some journals is it ethical they are asking which means uh, they are not including there in their conference proceedings but they are asking us to uh, publish in some journals is it ethical they are asking publishing uh, is not ethical say actually what have, what is the matter there is is that a standard publication that is a question there is not a fact of ethical or non ethical they, they are asking you to see so you have a news you have a news you can put that in a bc bbc you can put that in a sun a sun network you can give that same news to the local network right but the reach of the news is look at how where that i mean the information will be shared if you are giving to the local news it will be shared among the local people if you are giving to the state level uh, news channel it will be published along with the state level channels and if you are giving to the bbc so it, it's it's of the standards of sharing the information uh, when you have giving the paper you are publishing the paper in non standard journal then the information will never be shared provided that you never be, never get a citation and your paper will never get any recognition so you might you might ask the management uh, don't I mean uh when not to encourage those things yeah uh, someone has asked uh, another question so uh, dr devi uh, plagiarism checker my tool uh, so when you are going for online tool i just tell you i, I face the same concern i mean same um, problem see putting your paper I, i mean if you publish a paper and you just put the whole paper in the research gate and if you go for plagiarism again it will show as a plagiarism plagiarism but a uh, research gate it will take the source from the research gate and while it is checking you know uh, plagiarism check it will show your same content is plagiarized than the percentage will increase so never put a paper before you submit your thesis you know never put a paper in a research gate or anything then to remove the paper from the research gate again you have a lot a lot of procedures 
complete procedure is there you have to remove that because i encountered uh, encounter the same problem when i am submitting my thesis for plagiarism right so all my papers which i put in the research gate has got reflected that has been detected as a plagiarism then i finally uh, asked the uh, uh, i mean what is it like, uh, concerned person of uh, incha i mean uh, research gate uh, and then uh, he showed the way how to completely remove from the research gate then i completely removed from the research gate then my plagiarism got reduced and again another mistake is i just used online grammar grammarly tool for plagiarism check and again the, the database the software you know online software that holds my report there that holds my report there when i am going for offline tool turn it in like that quality i mean standard i mean uh, um, software for plagiarism check that software will find the same content which i checked made the check error check with the grammarly online tool and that will reflect as a plagiarism so never use online tools for uh, i mean uh, plagiarism check online free tools or any tools because that are all that are the sources that will set uh, i mean reflect as a plagiarism when you go for uh, you, when you using uh, quality uh, commercial tools for uh, percent i mean what's like evaluating your plagiarism report so you just use a one and only standard tool the i mean uh, i mean very standard uh, uh tools to do a plagiarism checking okay never go for online tools free online free tools that is not that will give you a rough, i mean once it will produce a I mean, result that will show that it is only seven percentage but already you have submitted the report report is on the database online in their source in their website when you are trying some other source some other software every paper i mean author i mean what's like uh, every journals will have their own plagiarism uh, tool to detect it and that tool will detect the online check which you done you know from that source and show that this is a plagiarist so never do online free uh, i mean use the online free tools for plagiarism checking Ma'am, any other questions? Yeah. Yes, no. sir. Uh, we have other questions like. Uh, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Can we highlight about gift uh, writing and ghost writing? No. What is the words limitations used by journals for checking plagiarisms? No, no. What's that? What? What? You, I mean, what they are meaning that gift writing, ghost writing. Uh, one one presenter is asking if you want you can uh, unmute you can ask directly to sir salama ma'am can we unmute him yeah then next to us rita Uh, sir, one uh, one participant has asked, can you highlight about the gift writing and the ghost writing, sir? Yeah, that's what I said. What, what, in what perspective is asking? Okay, I think he's not able to unmute. Yeah, I think uh, when phrases would have been gift writing is every journal will suggest like uh, even as a as a reviewer first comment what we make is the journal sounds good the paper sounds good it is it has a quality readability quality readability if you go and see uh, the nature journals if you read the papers from the rest nature journals at all. They will never ask for high end of uh, what's it like uh, high uh, advanced wordplay in I mean advanced uh, wordplay in uh, publishing the research I mean writing the text like that a simple sentence that attracts a large readable uh, readers I mean uh, readers that attracts a large large readers that is called a gift writing right simple sentence. That attracts, simplifies. Uh, it is. Uh, it reveals all the complete meaning of the work. What he is trying to do, trying to say, right? That is a gift writing. Ghost writing is 
the person who wrote the paper itself i think that is what he has been mentioning i think he would be not able to understand what he has written sir i am having one question yeah uh, like nowadays many of the research scholar are hiring some persons or institution for doing the data collection and analysis and okay. still they are writing that uh, and saying that data has been collected by them so which type of plagiarism will, is this no can can you repeat the question again uh, i was saying that many of the research scholar are like uh, hiring some of the person or the institution for do the data collection in behalf of them so hiring person to collect the data or uh... and uh, do the data analysis okay In instead of them doing uh, all the work they are hiring the people to do all the things and at the time of viva and all they are saying that okay we we had done this data collection no that is some people say they call it as outsource outsources and just giving money to another person to do the data collection right yes, yes, that sir. that might be done data collection you know uh, some people may not go and come but what is important is will they give you the reliable data yes they, that is the agreement you have to make if any data that has false start because you are you are dealing with the beneficial act you know so yes. you are paying for the person who is going to get the data so yes. you make a agreement legal agreement legal consent that all the data which you he is going to get us should be authorized by them if any wrong is identified he is the solely responsible person so then only you have to go for proceeding it because uh, like a marketing things you know market person is not you know, even he won't go on the road he'll sit he'll just sit at home when uh, the sales person the regional manager is calling you know he he just calls and tells them yeah i i just visited the doctor i visited this doctor i given this He asks for this medicine. He asks for this medicine. So he, he randomly says, uh, uh, "Information shares information." Similarly, the person should be reliable. When who has been assigned for the data collection? So data which he gives uh, gives us, you know, that should be reliable one. That you have to be having. That you have to give more concern on it, right? So yes, it is not you can you can employ the person for data collection, but it should be on the uh, agreement based. And he, uh, you have to make sure whether he is providing the legal, I mean, what's the like, uh, real data. Okay, sir. Ma'am, shall we end the session uh, after the vote of thanks? Participants, rest of the questions, we can pass it to our uh, resource person, and we'll get the answers, sir. Uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are coming to an end, sir. Now, can we close the session, sir? Yeah, yeah sure. Uh, based on your comment of saying outsourcing, uh, one of the participant is asking, sir, uh, you agree that outsourcing is ethical? Outsourcing, in the sense, means I mean, even the nature. If you go to NCBA, ne, I mean. uh labor i mean what's it like website itself they have a software they have developed the software for outsource right so they while they are creating a software every software is, even you, you can say like i have I've been we've been working on a molecular simulation tool we have a consultancy service we provide that the person uh, i'm i'm doing in silico work here the person who is doing a experimental work there he looks for a computational support because he is not having a computational knowledge yeah he is looking for the computational support see there are some areas like you, you in past four days we will be studying we are dealing with the ai support right so why we are relying on ai is for enhancing the research work you know experimental lab studying a protein behavior it takes years together in a computation lab studying one protein after a drug administered and uh, once the drug is interacted to that particular protein you study that protein behavior in what's it if you have a high end computer system thermos i mean what's it like molecular simulation studies that carried out in a matter of um, what is it like 100 ns to uh, 300 to 400 ns the moment i mean study of that behaviors protein behaviors in matter of 2 to 3 weeks right you cannot do that in a, which is not possible in experimental studies so that we can make 
I mean, relying on computer side, he is he is lacking with the computer knowledge. He is looking for the support. So I am giving the assurity. I am making the legal statement. Uh, I am just providing you the legal document with complete set of experiment. What you the what the protein you give, what the ligand you give. I just run a molecular dynamics simulations. So what the result I get is true to my knowledge. What has happened here? At any time you can replicate my work. Or you can you can try that with some other person, research person. So I'm just making it little. Uh, I mean legal. So there is no ethical concern in that. So outsourcing is in what way we outsource? There is different. See, don't think that giving an amount to some other person asking for the authorship is also an authorship. That is not a, I mean a outsourcing. That is not outsourcing. You do your work. A part of work you are looking for a support. Fine. You won't do anything. There are some person. I just forget this. There are some person. He will give some bit of work to another outsource. He will get a bit of work to another outsource. So yeah, finally he just clubs all the outsource work and he writes some I mean manuscript and submits. Okay, fine. What is problem here is how I mean what is the procedure they followed and what is the methodology they have been running that what are the instrument they are used. The person who is I mean collecting all the data should get aware of all this information. They should he should have all the informations. I mean whatever the experiments they come I mean con, I mean what's like they carried out you know they carry out in the outsourcing organization. He, I mean, the person who is outsourced it you know he has to get aware of what is a uh, instrument they used, what methodology they followed, and uh, uh, what are the solvents they used, what are the chemicals they used. So everything he has to update. Then he has to write the manuscript. Outsourcing is not just getting the I mean, information, just putting together and just publishing a paper. The person who is asking for outsource, you know, he has to upload what is happening. So when person they ask, they send the paper, I mean, uh, support from us, our side, you know, they, we will update them. This is what we did. This is the method we followed. This is the thing happened. This way, this is the uh, methodology we followed for uh, figuring out RMST. This is the methodology we just calibrated binding energy. So all the things we write the report and we give to the concerned person. He will, he has to sit and read, understand. Then he has to start writing the manuscript. Without without understanding what is happening, he can, how how on earth he can write a manuscript, complete manuscript. So outsourcing is is good, but in a better, in a legal way. Over to Vaidegi ma'am. Vaidegi ma'am. Uh, sir, yes sir. Uh, Can I, uh, I stop uh, sharing my PPT? Yes sir, yes sir. Yeah. Uh, there is also one more question in the chat box, which is very different from others. He was asking okay. about the Grammarly app. He was asking, he mentioned about the Grammarly app and uh, he also says, I mean, uh, premium Grammarly. So if Grammarly, on, don't, that, that's what ma'am, I, I say like, don't use online trial version in Grammarly. Even that will be trapped as uh, server will hold the data. And if oh. you... So you have to purchase a Grammarly tool. Uh, okay, Commercially, so. you have to download it. You have to install. You have to get the license. You just try on it. So they will start safeguarding your information. So in that way, your uh, plagiarism will be reduced. If you are if you are using online free tool trial version something, definitely that will be held in the web source. So some other tools, you know, if you are using again. From earlier, what you've done, you know, from that source, it will show us a plagiarism. Okay. And, uh, okay, sir, we are coming near, near to the conclusion, but uh, still I have uh, two things for the benefit of the participant. One of the participants is asking, I'm very, very young research scholar. So what is your advice how to start my research paper? He actually wanted a very, uh, you know, uh, basic uh, uh, preparedness for research paper, how to prepare myself for research paper. That is one question. The another question, uh, most of them are asking like, uh, if I'm going to choose a uh, paper presentation, what is the weightage I have to see? Is it for my paper or for the journal? I have to check whether the journal is good 
and uh, is it having a good weightage something yeah. like that or i have to concentrate on my paper so this is the yeah. question yeah first first i'll ask i mean answer for the second question which you asked then i'll go back to the first one because that is uh, pretty what's it like uh, i love that kind of uh, students you know uh, i i just spend more time on it but i answer the second question you know i and i just come back and say like zero point impact the paper which is published in zero point impact factor doesn't mean that it is it lacks potentiality the paper which is published in 125 uh, i mean impact factor is doesn't mean that it is it it has a high caliber and highly appreciable paper so impact factor is the rating that is given to the journal based on the readability and citation and that is no way it is going to uh, i mean uh, what's it like show the strength of your a potentiality of your work it shows the readers the vast readers of the journal that is why it is having the i mean what's like uh, impact factor vast readers means a uh, lot of readers are relying on the data which is published in that particular journal so when you publish that you might also i mean uh, come out with uh, citations so it doesn't mean that uh, publishing a paper in high impact factor is highly potent and publishing a paper in least impact factor never 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 conclude in that way that i could say like the paper which is published i mean uh, 2.2 uh, impact factor has fetched a uh, one crore funding amount and grants from the organization rather than the paper which is published in seven has failed to get me the fund so never it is it is the strength of the work uh, is the concept which is taken the area which is taken i could say like if you ask me the covid or uh, male infertility which will have high weightage covid is seasonal disease infertility is a long term disease so every time the people will come across this infertility it will the weightage will be keep on going because it is a progressive research and covid is a seasonal now it has been silented and if again if something happens new there's it's fires back you know then the covid will come into existence but uh, since you can say like tuberculosis it's a ancient era disease tuberculosis and leprosy leprosy is an ancient era disease and that is a challenging disease even today and you can see like the paper which has been published long back is coming back again it is having 2000 3000 citations but that time it is offline uh, they published the paper in the book they copied that they published they connected that they put up information in online now the paper is getting citations so don't worry of the standards of the journal if it is i mean if it is a reputed publisher the journal is having some scopus so i mean scopus citation and web of web of, web of science or you can say like ngba pubmed because these are the sites where people will go and fetch i mean look for the papers so that will reach vast readers so the vast readers will use your data for the publications so cross references in that way your citations will come and the citations is again not shows the potentiality of the work it shows the importance current hap and that is related to the current research i mean current necessity or current requirement the citation shows a current i mean a necessity of the research work that is why it is getting cited again and again people are again and again working the same field that's why your paper is getting cited so don't worry of this potentiality my work is potential enough or not it is the person who is handling the paper has to defend it it is potential that is in our hands and second question coming back to the second question all right uh, for the young uh, researcher i would uh, i would like to teach i would encourage being an honest is a good personality for young researchers and uh, being a uh, researcher uh, figuring out wherever you see whatever you see you have to see a goodness in everything and that is one research and wherever you see what what I mean what you do what you speak whatever you i mean what they tend to give or anything it, it should be out of honest and these are the practices when you start doing it your that will reflect in your research and you will have the i mean a heart of awareness not to do any unethical issues then coming back to the writing or uh, thing you know uh, just encourage i mean what train up yourself in uh, i mean re, i mean re, writing is different from what we uh, speak spoken english and written english are different okay 
written english will remain every every time every time you know the same every time it won't give the same meaning when when i just come in a different mood and i sit and read you know it will reflect in a different meaning right so when you're writing something it is fixed it will never no, it will never change it will never get changed so written english is a strong what's it like perceptions when you write a paper it should there should be no flaws in it and there should not be any you know you have to write in a way like what's it like you should learn how to write the paper right uh, simply as uh, i mean you have to illustrate a entire mummy you can say like, there is a teaser there is a what's it like a full movie your abstract is a teaser right these are the writing and tips i could give to you a abstract is a teaser it will show the climax scene a little bit a song scene a little bit and it will show you the some fight scene a little bit but it will never show the complete part of that is a teaser that is abstract and result in result you know that is a fi final area where the things is happening then conclusion you know that touches from the introduction and then few points of methods and few points of results and then you just overall discussing what you are going to what has happened now and what you are going to do in the future so this is a slight glimpses i could give that you have to exercise yourself how to put that in an interesting way when i start reading abstract a reader should tend to buy a complete work because in that way you have to write your abstract when your abstract is interesting then obviously the reader will look into a full manuscript then manuscript will start giving and above all that the area of research should be current topic so the, these are the factors you have to look into that don't or, or else it's say like uh, i mean it's a challenging a challenging area which has been from for the past decades two decades and it is challenging even today in the city the city area in that area our current topic so just figure out which area you want to focus and i mean uh, be honest in what you are producing the result and write it in a better way simple way so that every reader should understand what you are trying to say right so that is what so be a good citizen good bit good researcher and good as i mean i encourage good uh, disciple for your master then one day you will have a very good disciple for you right yes sir thank you so much sir for uh, patiently listening and answering all our questions uh, thank you so much uh, we are really very grateful to you and wonderful presentation and we could see um, the result from the chat box all everybody is appreciating and they said it's a wonderful session thank you so much thank you thank you thank uh, thank you i uh, once again i thank thank you ma'am vaidhiki ma'am and uh, unika ma'am for giving me the opportunities opportunity to address us uh, i mean gathering with us particular topic uh, really i appreciate uh, really i mean express my sincere gratitude to your to you and uh, to the management yeah thank you thank you sir uh, you know uh, uh, during our academic exchange program uh, yeah. our interaction with you has really made me to uh, fix you should be a resource person for our fdp i think oh. today is the day thank you it was a wonderful knowledge sharing session sir my oh, thanks for you. your management for uh, you know giving concern to uh, do this uh, thing now yeah. over to the formal uh, uh, vote of thanks to rita yeah sure, sure thank you sir i on the behalf of organizing team it's my privilege to propose a vote of thank on this occasion my heart feels with lot of gratitude and respect for our distinguished resource person dr r j sujaya sudan sir for not only sparing their invaluable time for us to grace this occasion but also for enlightening us with their commendable talk on the topic research ethics your presence adds a special warm to our gathering and thanks uh, and to this event more memorable i pass my warm thanks to all the participants for their significant presence in the fdp and i extend my gratitude to our principal ma'am vice principal ma'am achodi ma'am and all the staffs of and the research scholar of patrician college of arts and science thank you all for being here today this is rita kalundia research scholar pg and research department of commerce from patrician college of arts and science thank you all for being here 
ma'am yeah thank you sir uh, participant you, yeah participant today is a great day the final day of our seven day fdp please do join and don't forget thank you sir see you sir see you ma'am see you ma'am yeah thank you i thank you ma'am thank you chellama yes, ma'am yes, ma thank you everyone yes. thank you sir thank you, once again thank, thank you. you thank you sir thank you sir thank you sir thank you ma'am thank you chellama ma'am thank you chellama ma'am yes ma'am thank you all dear participants your feedback link uh, which is post posted in the chat box kindly fill the details before you leave the platform tomorrow yet another uh, important uh, session from uh, dr rukshana banu from muscat college participants from the end of the show salama ma'am we posted a feedback link i think uh, yeah ma'am it was posted for the multiple times ma'am participants please make use of this for feedback links please don't ask again in the whatsapp group if your friends are not available please share with them technical issue we do understand so definitely you can share it's, uh, because uh, now it's 8 o'clock uh, 8:18 so we understand so anybody uh, facing any technical difficulty ma'am uh, your voice is not audible ma'am so now ma'am yeah. ma'am yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. the dear participants uh, kindly share if they face any technical difficulty thank you so much i think uh, we'll uh, we'll sign for today's session and this is dr vaidegi and dr chellamma signing off thank you Um, shall I end the meeting? Yes, ma. Yes, ma. Bye, bye, everyone. Bye. See you tomorrow. Thank you, ma'am. Thank ma you, sir. Yeah, thank you, sir.